So I'm in uh, central PA on a gorgeous Mother's Day. As you can see, the weather just is, is beautiful outside. It's, uh, <laughs> it's amazing how this massive cold front has come through. It's about 42 degrees right now. The water's still really nice. It's actually really low. Um, I'm sure it's gonna raise big time tonight because the rain is just like settling in. There's gonna be one and a half to two inches of rain today, but uh, I've caught about three so far. Um, you know, I still think I should have a pretty decent day because the uh, water looks nice. I mean, it's gonna be a little tougher than normal just because of the cold front, but I still think we can, we can catch a few. So wish me luck. There we go. Decent fish too. Oh, nice brownie jump. Nice jump. Had him on the, uh, boy, that was a nice one. Had him on the, uh, I got an olive size 16 crystal flash uh, paradigm on the bottom and on my dropper I have a pink butt waltz worm size 18. I, when I fish Spring Creek I typically have a uh, waltz worm on and I have really good luck with that pink butt. Uh, but there's a ton of sow bugs and scuds and I just think um, I just think a waltz does a great job of imitating a uh, a sow bug, especially after you catch a couple. I tie mine very thin, but after you catch a couple, it gets all ragged out and always seem to have really good luck on it here. But I like using a darker, I got a dark uh, paradigm on just because it's super low cloud cover and I tend to go kind of dark days, dark bug. And um, I think that was probably my fourth or fifth and all of them have come on that paradigm so far. I don't know if you can see on my rod, I have the mono wrap on it. I did a video on how to deal with rain and thin leaders, and I've got that mono wrap. I had already rigged it up because I knew I was going to be fishing in the rain today. And it does work like a charm. If you haven't seen that video, you should check it out. I'll make sure I put it in the description, but it absolutely 100% works. If you're having your leader stick to your rod and rainy conditions, wrap it with mono, problem solved. There we go. Man, he whacked it. God, rod almost came out of my hand. Hit that bottom fly again. What a Nice. Gotta be one up in here. Shallow, but still looks good. There we go. Hit that paragon again on the bottom. Right up in that skinny water, right up in there. This is uh, this is where your cast really is key. When you're fishing quick, shallow water like this, you gotta be tight to your bugs right away. When you cast, you gotta be tight right away. You can't try to catch up to your drift because that fish hit probably two feet into the drift and I was tight to my line right away. 
Casting is really important in Euro nymphing, and you just don't see a lot of people really stress the cast, but I mean, the cast actually sets up the entire drift. So you gotta get tight to it right away, just like that, especially in this really shallow water. See, I'm tight to it right away. Right away I'm on it. Good drift right there. Good drift. Oh God. That's a bad cast, but decent recovery. Let's get down that seam there. There we go. Quick release. Oh no, he's on. <laughs> I thought he dropped off. <laughs> Still on that Paragon. They are whacking that thing. You make a bad cast, don't rip it out of the hole. Just go ahead and fish it. You can get a good recover. If you can get a good recovery, more than likely you can. Just fish it out, and that's a perfect example. That was not a good cast but yet I recovered and I got it down this seam here. It's a really nice run. I'm gonna fish this out right here in front of me and then I'm gonna start making some casts that are gonna flirt with that tree, but it's certainly worth it because that looks like a really nice area. Let my cider I let my cider sink down a little and just to get it to death. There's a little bit of depth in there and he whacked it. Everything's on that paired to gone on the bottom fly. Boy, the rain's stopping. I hope, I hope it stops for a while. That's a nice brownie right there. That's a nice one. Good looking fish. Paired to gone right there. Boy, that is just a good looking hole right there. I don't know if you can see that rock right there, but I, did you see that riser right there? That was a good looking fish right there. Boy, I gotta get him. I am just waiting for a massive olive, olive hatch to come up. That's a nice brownie. Let's get that guy. There we go. There we go. I think that's that fish. It's a decent fish. Looks like that one. There we go. There we go. Look at that brownie. That's a beauty. That is a beauty. Love it when they jump like that. Love it. That's a good looking fish right there. Nice chunker. Nice fatty. Look at that guy. Hitting that pair to go on. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I actually saw that fish, he rose right there, and I didn't let my flies get all the way down. I actually kept my cider up a little so the flies would kind of go in his face because I knew he was up in the column and he whacked it. 
soon as I talk about the rain stopping, it starts up again. There we go. It's a decent fish. Boy, right up in that skinny water. Right up in that skinny water. <laughs> That's the first fish. Is it on the dropper? It's the first fish on the dropper. Decent fish there. It's a good looking fish. Got him on the waltz. I actually took the pink butt waltz off and I put a uh, waltz with an orange collar on it. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Right up in that skinny water. He was on it as soon as it hit. And once again, that's the importance of being able to cast and get tight to your rig right, right away in this skinny, fast water. And it's all about the cast and the style of casting. It's not this lob. It's a quick flick of the wrist and boom, your line's gonna go over the top of the rod and get tight right away. I'll say it again. I can't stress the importance of casting when you're euro nymphing. If you learn how to cast instead of lobbing it, you're just gonna you're just gonna get better at it. When I first started euro nymphing, I was just kind of flop, plop, and drop. But as I realized and I, I was taught better techniques, that it's all about casting. If you learn how to cast, it sets up the drift. You can fish farther away at distance. There's tons of, everybody thinks Euro nymphing is just right under the rod tip with a fixed amount of line. I'm constantly fishing 25, 30 feet away, especially here. I mean, that cast right there was probably, geez, that was almost 30 feet. Certainly more than 25 for sure. And I know there's probably some other fish up in here and that run over there. I see some birds working, there's some bugs coming off now. Yes. Spring Creek gets hammered. I mean, you can see this truck coming down the road. I mean, you talk about a pressured stream, but Spring Creek will teach you a lot. I mean, these fish, as pressured as they are, they are more than willing to bite. They see tons of flies go by their face. Uh, so, it, your drift is everything on Spring Creek because these fish are ready and willing to eat even though they've got God knows how many flies going by their snout, but if you Make nice casts nice drifts. You are going to be rewarded with fish on spring and if you're struggling here You just got to really pay attention to your drift because I mean it is this mass it, today's May 9th and there is a massive cold front that's come through. It is it is actually really cold. I got to put my other glove on. I mean it's I don't think the temperature is above 45, but it is just raw out. It's rainy and the conditions couldn't be worse. I mean it was 70 degrees a couple days ago. It's going to be 70 2 days from now or 3 days from now. But even with this cold front coming through, it's not even shutting the fish down. So these fish are always, when the water could, and it's actually very low right now, but when the water is right here at spring, if you're not having good luck, once again, just pay attention to your drift because it is everything. There we go. Hit the dropper. Sort of liking that uh, little walk now. I tell you, the walk is always a good one on Spring Creek. Can never go wrong with a walk here. Hell, this is where it was invented. Right here. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Some skinny water are hanging out in. I'm gonna change my bottom fly. I'm gonna lighten it up a bit. I just see a, it's skinny water in here and I see a bunch of fish kind of rolling at the top for emergers. 
So I'm going to get my whole rig up in the column. Just going to put the same fly on. Uh, actually, I'm just going to go with... This is a... Not a crystal flash pair to go on, but it's... Uh, olive quill body with an orange collar it's called a poison ivy paragon this is a size 18 so right now i have two 2.3 beads on and i'm gonna get it up in the column here Take along. You hit that poison ivy paragon. Always have good luck on that bug. It's just very subtle, no flash. Just with a small orange collar. Take him around. I don't know if you can see him. It's a good bug. There's going to be more out here. I can just see them come up. Oh, man, he nailed it. He nailed it. There we go. He's on the wall. See, I got both bugs going in the same level now. Right on the fish eye level. Terrible. Net job. That was a five from the Russian judge on that net job. <laughs> that is awesome. I tell you, when you're fishing really light bugs, that's when you you're not you're not going to feel them that much often. It's you got a real, real loose uh, cider. You just have this nice. You get a nice bow in your cider and you're just watching that cider just for any slight movement so when you go light a lot of times i'm fishing a just a single 2.3 bead and i mean you, you feel them hit but more often than not you see the cider jump when you have heavier bugs on that's when you tend to feel them a little bit more because you're a little bit tighter to your rig but that was just classic i had a nice little bow in it coming down it just got a little tight and he was on there might be another one in there just got a little oh <laughs> just had a little bow and I the cider just jumped once again in these small pockets, you got to be tight to your bugs. This is where casting is really paramount. See, if I do this, if I just kind of talk with a cigar in my mouth, I see a lot of guys they have a fixed line right here, and they just kind of go like this. 
right? And then they're doing this with the rod and they're trying to catch up to it. Big lob. And they're just trying to catch up to it. If you learn to use this non-rod hand and manage the slack with your non-rod hand, you're gonna have crisp cast and look at that. See, I'm right on it. The cider's not jumping around. When you're lobbing it like that, you know, you, you get a lot of jump with the cider. But when you do a quick, nice cast, and I'm managing the slack with my non-rod hand, right back to the rod tip. That way you're fishing right away. When those bugs enter the water, you're fishing immediately. I think I gotta go to a heavier bug here. Okay, I went back to a 2.8 on the bottom, that olive crystal flash. A little bit more depth in these pools here. Let's get up here and fish this. Weight up a little, get it down. That's the walks again. That walks is such a simple bug, but man, it's productive. Really productive. That's it, the advantage of being able to fish at distance. You cannot, you could not lob that over there. You had to cast. Got him on the waltz again. Got Mr. Brown. Better fish. Got on the waltz again. That's a nice chunker. Real nice fish. Good. 13 inches. Look at this rain coming down. And that's uh, my breath, not my cigar smoke. Let's try to get a little bit further over in that slack order. There we go. Decent fish. Come on, baby. Nice fish. Him on the paragon. Ah, 
Get a little chunker. There we go. Decent fish. Nice one. Nice chunk right there. Boy, it's a beauty. That is a good looking fish right there. Nice fish. This run, look at this. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, my line is dang on straight downstream when we're getting ready to talk about this run. Dude, wax it. Wax it. So, anyway, <laughs> like I was saying, thanks, Mr. Brown. So, this run right here. It's probably two feet deep. There's a couple boulders out there. It's just a really, really, really nice area to fish here. And what's nice about it is because of the low cloud cover, the rain, I can get fairly close. I mean, so it's 10 feet. I'm probably fishing a good, probably 18 feet out in front of me. But, you know, you can see these fish. I've hooked them right here. So with these low water conditions, if the sun was out, I would not be able to get this close. I'd probably be on the bank on my knees right here, making these casts out here. But, you know, I can get up fairly close just because it's such crappy weather. It's letting me do that. There we go. Good lordy to jump. That <laughs> guy. That's awesome. I love it when they jump. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Brown. And I'm all tangled in the tree above me right here. There we go. Not as bad as I thought. Man, they are in this run right here. Holy smokes. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, this is too funny. They are hitting it on the swing a lot here. There we go. That wasn't on the swing. That's a decent fish. Look at that jumper, huh? Oh. That's awesome. That is awesome. Look at that guy. So sweet. That is a chunk right there, buddy. That is a 
Spring Creek Chunk right there. Look at that guy. Nice. That's a beauty. Now here. It's a good drift right there. There we go. Hit the dropper. Like I said, these fish on spring, they are really pressure, but they're very catchable with the good drifts. In a day like today when nobody wants to be out here, I've got this whole creek to myself. This is a duck and worm day, as uh, my wife would say. It's a little shallower here, but still, still nice water. There we go. You hit that gasolina, which is similar to that olive uh, crystal flash bug. It's just a little, got a little bit more shine to it. That's a nice chunker. That's a real nice chunker right there. Boy, he's a fatty. He is a fatty. Look at that gut on that thing. Boy, I'm smoking them out of this run. Tight to it right away. Good looking drift. There we go, fish on. <laughs> now I'm in that tree. Oh, mother of God. Oh, nice fish. See, I got tight to the cider right away or tight to my bugs, I should say, right away in that shallow pocket up there. <clears throat> he hit pretty quick in the drift, too. That's why it's so key to get tight to your bugs right away. Good looking chunk. Boy, he is a fatty. Boy, that's a good looking fish. Good looking buck the fish right there. Look at the spots on him. There we go. Change spots. It's just as cold and wet downstream as it was upstream. <laughs> but the fish seem as willing down here as they were up there which is a good thing Ugh. that's all right quick release had him on the paragon this is a nice run that was a bad bad drift That's a good drift. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. 
and hit the dropper. Last one was on the point fine. This one was on the dropper. That 18 volts. Nice chunk. I'm having a pretty darn good day out here. Oh, big fish. Nice fish. Oh, it seemed a lot bigger <laughs> when I saw it flash in the bottom. It was a nice fish. Just thought it was a lot bigger when it turned. Look at that jumper, man. That's just sweet. Just sweet. Boy, when he turned, I thought he was. Oh, it was an 18 incher. But solid 12, 13. Looking brownie. It's a nice deep hole here. Really nice. I caught him kind of at the bottom of my drift, right there where <clears throat> the nymph gets at the deepest spot. It's probably a good three feet right here. Let it swing. Look at that. <clears throat> just had a feeling there'd be a fish down there in that tail out. I just let it swing at the bottom of my drift and he nailed it. It was a rock over there and he it swung right in front of that rock there. Took the pair on. Well, he's par marked up. Pretty fish. Big. Big bellies on these fish. Boy, these birds are really working, but I don't see any bugs. I'm just dunking my cider here a little. It's a little deep. There we go. Here going again. Well, that was perfect. Got a little depth out here, so just I have about four feet to my bottom fly. So I'm just dunking my cider a little bit because it is about four feet deep or so, I would say little area here nice little cut right there <clears throat> there's a tree behind me I see it's a graveyard for flies drop it right behind that rock There we go. Boy, he just, just started swinging and he nailed it. Get the pair to go on again.
just beautiful, beautiful fish here on Spring Creek. These fins, just gorgeous brownies. Here we go. Hit it on the swing again. Hit it on the swing. Paragon. That's a nice chunk there. Really nice fish. Talk to me, goose. Beauty. Look at those spots. So distinctly different than from the last one I got. So cool. I'm just, saw a rise right there. So I'm just working up. I'm taking a couple steps at a time. I'm kind of working this fast, honestly. It's, uh, I'm running out of <clears throat> daylight, so. <laughs> There's really, it's really good up there. I want to hit it, but I got to fish this pretty decent. <clears throat> this is a nice run right here in front of me. fish though a little bit of a shelf there and it was just on the edge of that shelf in the deeper side on the paragon boy they are rising over there big time that's a pretty fish Thank you, Mr. Brownie. We had a big tail. run on that other side. It's got some nice depth here. There we go. There we go. At the dropper. Well, they are eating good here. They are eating good. Now look at the sparse spots on that one and all the red. So distinctly different from each fish. It's so cool. This rip has a little depth to it, so it looks pretty darn good. There we go. Just look really good. Hit the paragon. Uh, nice chunker. There's going to be a couple more fish over in there. Yes, 
just a really nice run here. Oh man, he nailed it. Nailed it right at the end. There we go. Pair to gone. Couple more casts and we're gonna call it a day. I have had a heck of a good day. Oh, <laughs> I gotta catch that one. There we go. Whoa. I knew this run would be good. It just had, it had depth. It's like I say about Spring Creek. So many trout, boy, that is a beautiful fish. Look at the spots on that guy. Look at the spots. Wow, that's gorgeous. All those reds. Mm. I say it all the time about Spring Creek. If you look at a run and you think, boy, that looks really good. I wonder if there's a trout there. Well, trust me, there's a trout there. <laughs> Spring Creek is just loaded with fish. Just loaded. You just got to get it in front of their face. So I'm going to be calling it quits. Uh, as you can see, it's still raining cats and dogs out. Today was a miserable day weather-wise, but... My God, what a great day fishing was. I mean, the, I just, I, it felt like I caught trout from the time I started until the time I ended. I was uh, double nymphing pretty much all day. I had a, uh, an olive crystal flash uh, paragon on the bottom and I had a waltz worm with an orange collar on top. And I feel like I split them 50-50. There was one other time um, I put a, uh, an, a, uh, a drab olive uh, body quill uh, bug on when the fish rose up in the column i had two 2.3 beads on but other than that i pretty much had a 2.8 on the bottom and a 2.3 on top but just a great day um one thing i say about spring creek and i probably said it a couple times in the video when you look at this river and you think you look at a stretch and you go man it looks really good there um well it probably is good there there's probably trout because this river is loaded it's just that you have to just uh, be really good about your drifts because they see a lot of flies go by their face. So just as long as you have your drift down right, you're probably uh, going to have some success here. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. And as always, I really appreciate all the support the channel's getting. And uh, tight lines, everybody. I'll see you later.